How y'all doing today? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video and this is going to be another morph highlight where we talk about the different, where we talk about the morph and then we get into what the morph will look like when it's combined with other traits. And before we get things started, man, I want to give a big shout out to all my subscribers, especially the new ones. I just reached 200 subscribers and I really appreciate all the likes, the comments, um, the DMs on my uh, Instagram page, man. It, I really appreciate that, man. It helps me stay motivated to make these videos, man. This is like my, a passion of mine and it's really cool to actually be in a community where I can just talk about snakes and hog noses and stuff like that and hear what other people, you know what I'm saying, have in their collection as well as their experiences and things like that. And also, um, before we get into this presentation, like before, none of these pictures are mine. Um, none of these snakes are mine. I just got these pictures from like Facebook, Google, Instagram, Morph Market, and things like that. They're, they're basically just used for educational purposes. So, and a lot of them I do um, put who produced these animals at the bottom. But with that being said, man, let's get down into it. And we're going to be talking about the exanthic gene or the exanthic morph, also known as an anery or anerythristic, basically an animal that lacks that orange and red pigment. So they're basically like silver, black, and white. Um, so let's get started, man. So this gene right here is a recessive trait. So it's similar to Arctic in terms of the look, but since it's recessive, this, in order for the snake to visually have the, the traits of an exanthic, it needs to have the exanthic gene from his mom and it needs to have the exanthic gene from his dad and they both need to line up. So on this first slide, these are two good pictures of the exanthic. Uh, the one on the left is a really good picture. It might be a little Photoshop, but as you can see, um, the snake doesn't have any reds or yellows or oranges. It's basically black, gray, and white. So now let's now let's start combining it with other genes. So let's first go into the incomplete dominant genes, the conda, which is basically a pattern reduction. And as you can see, these are two good pictures right there. So basically the same animal, um, mostly gray or silverish with just a reduced pattern. And so now let's go a step further and get look at it where it is the super conda, where it has two copies of the anaconda gene. And as you can see, this right here, I think it's called a platinum. So basically it's a patternless animal and it is like a, a silverish color. Um, it, it looks pretty cool, man. It's very unique. Um, it's a very clean looking animal. And um, I think Exantic really looks good in a superconda form. And I'm gonna show you a lot of pictures with the superconda. And so um, now let's get into the other uh, incomplete dominant gene that, that can combine with exanthic and that's going to be the arctic. And for some reason I had a hard time finding pictures of the arctic exanthic. I'm not really sure why not a lot of people are working with this. And so here's a picture right here that I found on Facebook and I think this is um, an arctic exanthic conda. I'm not 100% sure. The picture on the right actually looks like it has some paradoxing going on. Um, but like I said, I could, it's very few pictures of the Arctic Exanthic. Um, this next picture I'm going to show you is an Arctic Exanthic condo, but I think it is. Um, the person that produced this snake is Cleo's Kingdom Colubridge. She actually has a YouTube channel, so you can go follow her YouTube channel. And this is a very good picture. And um, I remember she put, posted this on Facebook and she wasn't really 100% sure if it had the Arctic in it. Um, she even contacted uh, Jeff at JMG uh, Reptiles, who was the first person to produce the Arctic trace, and he said that it is probably the Arctic exanthic. And as you can see, it doesn't look like a regular exanthic, man, and it does have a lot of the traits of the Arctic. You can see the background is kind of washed out, and then you can see how the pattern has a lot of that black pigment, that melanin around it. So this is a very pretty animal. So I'm pretty sure this is an Arctic Exanthic. All right, so without that, with getting that out the way, now let's get into some of the recessive uh, genes. And the first recessive gene I'm gonna cover is probably the most popular morph combination when you combine two recessive genes. This combination right here, man, whenever people post this, it sells out really quick. And 
people produced a lot of them uh, here in 2020. So uh, we're going to get into the mixing the albino with the exantic. And so on the right, you can kind of see um, an albino superconda and an albino, I mean, in a superconda exantic. And then on the, on the right hand side, just plain albino or plain exantic. When you mix them together, you get what's called a snow. So on the right hand side, it's just a snow. It's basically um, a, a snake that has a pink pattern and then a pure white background. Um, and then in the middle, you have the snow conda. So basically that same animal on the left, but just with a reduced pattern. And then on the right hand side, you have the snow super conda, which is basically an all white animal. They have a faint pattern on their head, a faint pinkish pattern. They have those red eyes. And it seems that as the snakes get older, um, that pink kind of goes away. And I've seen pictures of some snow condas that actually look like snow super condas because you can barely see the pattern in it but this is a very pretty snake like i say probably the most popular morph combination right now in the hog noses in my opinion um especially the the super conda um snow that's very sought after and it's very expensive but in my opinion i don't think that's the prettiest super conda that deals with the exanthic i'm gonna show y'all that um, in a further slide. But now let's get into the next recessive um, combination. And this one is going to be adding the toffee belly to the exantic. Um, and when you add these two together, you get what's called a toxic. And so it, it looks pretty similar to the snow, but instead of it having a pink background or a pink pattern, I'm sorry, um, you can see the pattern is more of a light gray color. And so on the left hand side, I just have the toxic and then on the right hand side, we have the toxic condo just with a reduced pattern. And so the next the next slide I'm going to show you to me, in my opinion, is one of the prettiest super condo morphs. And it's going to be the toxic super condo, man. Look at this picture um, right here. This is I prefer this than the snow super condo, man, because this is like in between the snow superconda and the snow exantic. It's like, it's not a white, white snake, but it's kind of like an off white and it's not totally gray. It's very unique. And I'm gonna be honest with you, man, looking at these pictures and seeing that light gray head pattern, I think this is a project that I may try to dibble and dabble in in the future, man. I think this right here is probably the prettiest superconda morph that's out in my opinion. All right, so next, let's get into the next recessive gene that you can combine with the exantic. And we're going to add in the caramel or the caramel to the exantic. And in my opinion, I can't really tell the difference between the caramel or the caramel and the toffee. Um, I think the difference lot relies on like the, the belly pattern. But in terms of like what the snake looks like and the color of their pattern and the background, they look almost identical to me. But when you combine them with different recessive traits, they produce a different animal. And so when you combine the caramel with the exantic, you get what's called a caramel snow. And these were the only pictures I can find on the internet of this. Uh, shout out to Underground Reptiles. As you can see, it's a kind of a, a weird looking snake. Um, it's not totally a snow because it's not um, completely white. As you can see, it has more pink involved in it. And I'm not really a big fan of what it looks like, but hey, that's one more combination that involves exanthic. All right, now let's get into the next recessive gene combination. And this is when you add sable to exanthic. And if you saw my sable video, um, you've already seen this right here. And this right here is probably the most unique hog nose coloration that's out right now. And this snake was first produced this year, not too long ago. So when you mix these two, you get the storm cloud. So this is like a, looks like the, the background is blue, especially in the left-hand side picture. So just imagine in a future when somebody develops the, the storm cloud super conda without a pattern. That may be a blue snake. Can, can you imagine that? A blue hog nose. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of, um, I, I think the sable gene, man, it's so much that can be done with that gene. And it's like when you combine it 
with other genes is like it produces totally different looking animals. As you can kind of see with the Xanthic, a lot of the combinations look similar to one another, but the Sable just produces all kind of crazy stuff. And so this right here, man, I, I'm really um, gonna keep my eye out on this project here. I really wanna see what this project looks like in the super anaconda form or even adding Arctic in it. All right, so now let's get into the next recessive um, gene that can be mixed with Xanthic, and we're gonna go into the Evans hypo. So basically a snake that's hypomelanistic, doesn't completely lack melanin. As you can see, it has the dark eyes, but it's more of a brownish snake. So when you add these two together, you get what's called a ghost. And so you can kind of see it's not my favorite looking hog nose snake, but um, like I say, I don't think a lot of people had it, man. I, I had a hard time finding pictures of this uh, combination as well. And so when you add in the superconda um, to the ghost, you get this right here, which is the the ghost superconda, aka the naked ghost. And as you can see, man, it has a really unique belly pattern, that all brown pattern. Um, and it's like kind of like the, the toxic superconda. It's not a completely off white. Um, it's kind of more like a white brown a light 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 brown color um something unique but like i say man a lot of the the exanthic combinations look kind of similar all right so now let's go into the next recessive gene and we're gonna mix the lavender with the exanthic and kind of like with the sable if you watch my lavender video you've already seen these pictures so when you come when you combine these two recessive genes together you get what's called a mercury so um the left hand side picture does a really good job of showing you not only the lavender on the far left and then in the middle an exanthic and then on the right the mercury so the combination with the lavender and exanthic on a um, right hand side we have another good picture of a mercury that kind of looks like just a lavender um, shout out to Jason Taylor um, for these pictures right here um, he's one of the top hog nose breeders i follow him on facebook it, he he produces some heat man um and then these next pictures are just the mercury conda not too good of the pictures but basically that snake with a reduced pattern all right and um i like this picture right here uh, shout out to jason taylor again um he gives he gives you pretty much um a compare and contrast of three different type of snakes so first you got the lavender on the left hand side then in the middle you have the toxic if you remember that is the exanthic and the toffee belly and then on the right hand side you have the mercury which is the exanthic and um what was just the exanthic and lavender so you can kind of see how those three look compared to one another um i think i like the toxic the best out of all those three but yeah man it's a lot that can be done with exanthic i think exanthic is one of those morphs that have been combined with a lot of different things um and basically that's it i'm pretty sure i missed some com combinations like always but man that's just kind of a good idea of uh, some of the things or some of the possibilities you can do with the exanthic gene like i say the most Probably the most uh, popular one is mixing the exanthic with the albino so you can get snows, but everybody's doing that, man. Do something else. And so, um, yeah, man, hopefully y'all enjoyed this slideshow. Hopefully y'all learned something. And um, you know what I'm saying? Just sit back and wait for my next videos. I actually ordered another snake that's gonna be coming in next week. Y'all not even gonna guess what type of hog nose that is. I'm really excited about that. I'm also, once I'm done shooting this, I'm about to get finished with my snake rack. Got all the stuff that I need for that and I'm gonna shoot that and show y'all how I do that. But at the end of the day, man, appreciate all the comments and I'll see y'all later.